My name is Eric Weinhandel. I am the Director of Home Dialysis Research at the Hennepin Healthcare Research Institute in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My name is Lisa Kester. I am a nephrology nurse practitioner for Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. We're going to talk about home hemodialysis, a therapy that I know is near and dear to your mm -hmm. heart as Absolutely. well as to mine. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about your experience uh, with the therapy in general. Well, my experience started about 20 years ago when we started our home hemodialysis program and I've been having the privilege of working with those patients over the last 20 years expanding the treatment to all sorts of different type of patients. A man who lived 65, 70 miles out um, at a small in-center dialysis unit but he wanted better quality of life and he was burdened by going to the dialysis unit during winter and getting there transportation his three and a half hour treatments turned into five hour treatments just because by the time transportation came and picked him up and he couldn't farm. He couldn't work on his farm. He was just like, I can't do other things. And so would people consider him for home dialysis, home hemo especially? Absolutely not. But we did. He, um, he worked out great. Um, he was able to cannulate himself. He figured out the machine and immensely his life just opened up after that. He felt all this freedom that he had never had before because he wasn't told what day to come in, what time to get there, where am I going to sit, and who's going to stick me. For an older man, it brought quality of life because many patients truly feel like when they are diagnosed with kidney disease that it's somewhat of a death sentence. They're like, oh great, I have to go on renal replacement therapy. I cannot do the things that I normally do. But that is absolutely untrue. And luck over the last 20 years, I have seen that blossom in our patient population. And we used to define people as ideal candidates mm -hmm. and put them in a box. That has gone away. Every patient deserves a chance. There's a lack of education out there. Patients feel like they're not informed about all their choices. They feel that once they go to an in-center dialysis unit, that that's it, that they can't transition to a home therapy, which is absolutely untrue. They feel like the, this chapter is closed in their life. Where do you uh, end up recruiting most of your home hemodialysis patients from? Is it primarily from patients who are already on in-center dialysis? So this has evolved over the last 20 years. So if you look at our first five years on home hemodialysis, all of our patients were prevalent patients in center. Okay. Or we had a couple that were PD patients who had PD was exhausted and they transitioned to home hemo. However, that has evolved into better education in the CKD clinics for us to be able to prepare patients and take them right out of CKD clinic now. I don't want them to see the walls of an in-center unit. I want them to, just to be at home. I do have to sometimes beg patients because they don't want to cannulate themselves because that is one of the biggest fears of going home, needle phobia. But I would say 98% of our patient population who I have dealt with for home hemo have overcome that and they surprise themselves. But then patients always tell me when we have transitioned them from in-center to home therapies that they forgot what it felt like to feel good again. Person has a catheter. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a disqualifier for home Absolutely hemodialysis? Not. I'm going to cut you off right now. Absolutely All right. not. And shameful, not? shameful for people not allowing patients to come to your program because they have catheters. We had a lady who had a catheter for six years because she was exhausted. Exhausted fistula, exhausted graft. Would I say, oh no, you have to go back in center? No, absolutely not. She's, she did well, had one catheter infection in six years. That being said, if you have CKD patients who land in the hospital who want to do home dialysis, are you going to say, no, you can't do home hemo because unfortunately you didn't plan your CKD journey out well enough to have seen a, a surgeon and get vein mapped and have a beautiful fistula or a graft, but you want to do home dialysis. So let's put you in center for the next three to six months mm -hmm. and to something, you know, you get to see the surgeons. But we want to make sure that you have an access plan to get vein mapping, to get an access. And then once that access is placed and it's matured, we'll come back either go to your home or you come back in and we'll teach you how to do cannulation training. On the topic of the care partner, do you have in your program, do you have direct conversations with the care partner without the patient present? I think the thing is, is that care partners will not say things in front of their loved one, right? And if you pull the care partner aside, and we don't make it very obvious, like their pa the patient's walking to the treatment area, the significant other, the care partners walking behind, we might just say, hey, how's it going for you? Or, you know, um, but um, that way, 
the the care partner is is fearful that what they say will impact their loved ones so much that they're scared to say it and so they forget about themselves and all of it there's been um early on in, in the early 2000s there out of australia there was this research that looked at care partner because we've been talking about care partner burnout um since we started this program in 2000 and care partners openly admitted that their quality of life improved with their loved one being at home but that being said that they couldn't predict exactly everything that they would have to do to keep their loved ones and their family's quality of life and it was burdensome we have realized this now i mean there are tools out there for care partners and we like for the care partner to come to clinic um, and if they can't, um, that is a challenge. But again, as we've evolved into telehealth and we're doing these visits at home via telehealth, usually the care partner is at home and they're just letting it loose, telling us everything that's going on, which sure. we totally appreciate. Sure. So um, sometimes what we do is we tell the care partner, it doesn't have to be your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter calling the training nurse or the social worker. We're here for you as well. So our number is not just for the patient, it is for the care partner as well. You know, I've published data in the past that has suggested that home hemodialysis patients do have higher rates of hospitalizations for infections than the in-center counterparts do. In my own mind, I've always been a little bit uncertain whether or not that's because infection actually occurs more frequently in home or because the home patients actually experience bloodstream infections at the same rate as the in-center patients mm -hmm. do, but they're a little reluctant to report symptoms. Correct. What do you think about the plausibility of that second scenario? And then if, it, if you think it's on the table, that people are sort of reluctant to reveal that they're having uh, signs of an infection, how do you encourage that kind of communication? Well, people get, patients get scared. They don't want to tell you that they didn't wash their arm correctly or if they were doing um, a buttonhole technique that they used the same needle when they couldn't get it the first time. During the training, we say, tell us everything. You're going to maybe not wash as well one day. Um, I think you need to have the comfort and established relationship with patients that you're not going to be like the principal pointing your finger right. because then patients get scared to report things. And we would rather know earlier than later because then it just opens up a whole nother can of worms. AdvancingDialysis.org is dedicated to providing clinicians and patients with better access to and more awareness of the reported clinical benefits and improved quality of life made possible with home dialysis, including more frequent, more intensive, and nocturnal therapy schedules. All forms of hemodialysis, including treatments performed in-center and at home, involve some risks. In addition, there are certain risks unique to treatment in the home environment. Patients differ, and not everyone will experience the reported benefits of more frequent hemodialysis. Certain risks associated with hemodialysis treatment are increased when performing nocturnal therapy due to the length of treatment time and because therapy is performed while the patient and care partner are sleeping. AdvancingDialysis.org is a project of Next Stage Medical Incorporated.